Chapter 3, American Flyer. Okay, back to the down under, right? My room in the basement? Scuttle into your dim hole in the ground, Maxwell, dear. Big goon like you, growing about an inch a day. And this midget kid? This crippled little humanoid? He actually scared you? Not the kind of scare that makes your knee bones feel like water. More the kind of scare where you go, Whoa! I don't understand this. I, I don't get it. What's going on? Like calling me Earthling. Which by itself is pretty weird, right? I already mentioned a few of the names I've been called, but until the robot boy showed up, nobody had ever called me Earthling. And I'm... S so I'm lying in my mattress there in the great down under, and it comes to me that he's right! I am an Earthling! We're all of us Earthlings! But we don't go around calling each other Earthling. No need, because it's the same thing. That in this country, we're all Americans. But we don't go around to people and say, Excuse me, American! Can you tell me how to get to the nearest 7-Eleven? So, I'm thinking about that for a while. Lying there in the cellar dark. And pretty soon, the down under starts to get small, like the walls are shrinking. And I go up to the bulkhead stairs into the backyard and find a place where I can check it out. There's this one scraggly tree behind a little freak's house, right? Like a stick in the ground with a few wimped out branches. And there he is, hardly any bigger now than he was in daycare. And he's standing there waving his crutch up at the tree. I kind of slide over to the chain link fence, get a better angle on the scene. What's he doing? Whacking at that crummy tree, trying to jump up and hit this branch with his little crutch. And he's mad, hopping mad. Only he can't really jump. He just makes this jumping kind of motion. His feet never really leave the ground. Then what he does, he throws down the crutch and he gets down on his hands and knees and he crawls back to his house. If you didn't know, you would think he was a little kindergarten creeper who forgot how to crawl. He's that small. And he crawls real good, better than he can walk. Before you know it, he's dragging this wagon out from under the steps rusty red thing, one of those old American flyer models. Anyhow, the little freak is tugging it backwards a few inches at a time, chugging along until he gets that little wagon under that tree. Next thing, he picks up his crutch and he climbs in the wagon and he stands up and he's whacking at the tree again. By now, I figured out that there's something stuck up in the branches and he wants to get it down. This small, bright colored thing looks like a piece of folded paper. Whatever it is, that paper thing, he wants it real bad. But even with the wagon, there's no way he can reach it. No way. So I go over there to his backyard trying to be real quiet, but I'm no good at sneaking up, not with these humongous feet. And he turns and faces me with that crutch raised up like he's ready to hit a grand slam on my head. He wants to say something. But you can tell that much. But he is so mad. He's all huffed up and the noise he makes could be from a dog or something. And he sounds like he can hardly breathe. What do I do? I keep out of range of that crutch and just reach up and pick the paper thing right out of the tree. Except it's not a paper thing. It's a plastic bird, light as a feather. I have to hold it real careful or it might break. That's how flimsy it is. I go, uh, do you want this back or, or what? The little freak is staring at me bug-eyed, and he goes, Ow! It talks! 
I give him the bird thing. Uh, what is it? Like a model airplane or something? You can tell he's real happy to have the bird thing back. And his face isn't quite so fierce. He sits down in the wagon and he goes, This is an ornithopter. An ornithopter is defined as an experimental device propelled by flapping wings. Or you could say that an ornithopter is just a big word for a mechanical bird. That's how he talked. Like right out of a dictionary. So smart you can hardly believe it. While he's talking, he's winding up the bird thing. There's this elastic band inside. And he goes, Observe and be amazed, Earthling. And uh, then he lets it go. And you know what? I am amazed because it does fly just like a little bird, flittering up and down and around, higher than I can reach. I chase after the thing until it breaks against the scrawny tree and I bring it back to him and he winds it up again and makes it fly. We keep doing that. Well, it must have been for almost an hour. Finally, the elastic breaks. I figure that's it. End of ornithopter. But he says something like, all mechanical objects require periodic maintenance. We'll schedule installation of a new propulsion unit as soon as a fair Gwen gets a replacement. Even though I'm not sure what he said, I go, that's cool. Do you live around here, Earthling? Uh, over there, I pointed out the house. In the down under, he goes, what? And I figure it's easier to show him than explain all about Graham and Grimm in the room in the cellar. So I pick up the handle to the American Flyer wagon and I tow him over. It's real easy. He doesn't weigh much and I'm pretty sure I remember looking back and seeing him sitting in the wagon happy as can be. Like he's really enjoying the ride and he's not embarrassed to have me pulling him around. But like Freak says later in this book, you can remember anything whether it happened or not. All I'm really sure of, he never hit me with that crutch. <laughs>